Victor is, from the comic side of things, Victor originally comes from a place called Latveria, uh, which is a place that doesn't exist. It's kind of uh, an Austrian type place. Um, he was, what was he again? He was the, the son of a, of a Latverian prince, I think it is, and a, um, and a gypsy mother. The man is the world's worst villain, but he never did anything illegal. Never did anything wrong. All he wanted to do was rule, was rule the world. world. And if he parked incorrectly or something, he had diplomatic immunity. Right. So I loved him for that reason. Yeah. He's the only villain in comics who was king of his own country with diplomatic immunity. Uh -huh. So you are not just your average villain, I want you to be aware of. Oh, you know, you, uh, <laughs> there was not a moment in time where I thought he was an average villain, trust me. For me, since Austin Power is very tough to make movies about taking over the world thing, you need like a smaller mission. And, and what works very well for us with villains in the Marvel Universe is that the story is more personal. So we made some changes uh, to make Doctor Doom uh, a peer member, if you will. The only bad thing about your role, I hate to say this, and I don't want to depress you or mm -hmm. make you feel bad, <laughs> you don't get the girl. You know, i got to be honest you with you, it is a I feel depressing. bad about that. It is a little, actually, I just did a scene where I got out uh, just after the Fantastic Four has done all their thing, and, you know, this big crowd was there to greet them yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And then about, you know, an hour later, Victor arrives in his limos. He's totally used to that whole, you know, I'm here and everybody's paying attention to him. Yes, I know that feeling. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure you do. So I get out of the car and everybody's like, oh, can't be bothered, don't I was like, where's the love? Where's the love? Where's the, the love is dissipated from Victor. That is, buddy. I'm not feeling much love from the group, and I'm well, wondering if we can warm that up a little. Well, but it's in the character. They're not, they're not supposed to love you. And so what I've told them Part of the movie is that one. Nobody gave me the rewrites, which, man. Which group I thought I was well loved in this movie. Right. You, well, you are, but it's from different... It's from the, different the, the evil oh, people. No. They're <laughs> not here. They only come out of them are evil. Do you if he wants to shoot reference on this? Uh, I'll shark. kill them all. What? Do you, want to, do you mind if we shoot reference on this? Uh, what does that mean? Like the reference balls, do you care? It's time they use my reference balls. <laughs> Wait, we're doing one more of this. One more and then we'll shoot one balls. balls. Big balls, small balls. Ooh, we have a double ball. Uh, Julian is just, first of all, he's one of the funniest guys you ever meet. But what was great about Julian is I met him early on in the casting process, and he came in and sat down with me, and I just remembered him all the time. And we went through our normal casting thing where you meet everybody and their mother, and nobody just stood out like Julian. Julian just gave us this presence. Excuse me if I say for the moment. <laughs> Even he has a little bit of an accent, and that was perfect, you know, because we just wanted, we didn't want to say that Victor was from a specific place. I mean, he is from Liberia, but we didn't want to say that, um, quote unquote, but we just wanted him to sound non American. How come they let you dress this way? I mean, aren't you what being you villainous me, somewhere? Oh, oh no, this is the villain. This is, this is, this is the oh, true is villain, the, was always oh, cloaked it, you, in something that you would never expect okay. him to be cloaked in. You haven't become Dr. Doom yet. With no, all I'm the just stuff starting. This is just when we came back to Earth after yeah. our little space mission. I have to do something about this scar. Make sure they only shoot me from my left side. Actually, uh, the scar's tracking well. People seem to think it humanizes you. <laughs> and that's a good thing? Victor, I wanted to take him through an arc as well in his, in his wardrobe. So in the beginning, his wardrobe was a lighter. You know, his suit's a slightly lighter, pale, you know, kind of grays, and his shirts are creams and whites. And as he goes through his arc, his shirt's and his wardrobe darkens, goes into grays and darker grays and graphites, and eventually goes to black and then these deep greens. And here you can see some of the details are starting to come together. The interior, which is pretty amazing. Beautiful texture and colors. And then the back, which I love. So when, he, when he's going around, actually you get this thing opens up and you get the shots of red, which is pretty beautiful. And then here's the workroom where a lot of stuff gets put together. See a pair of pants getting made here, panels going together. The amount of work in these coats alone is just insane. And these ladies have put up with so much. And over here we have a this balaclava that he puts on. And this thing, to me, I, I mean, there's so many bits and pieces I love, and this is one of them I really love. It's, it has, it mocks kind of the muscles. So you get kind of sinew, you got the clavicle, 
and the fabrics, when these things are lit on screen, they almost look wet. It's really a great effect. And so the helmet then will fit down into here. It just has, I don't know, just has really eerie quality about it. Do you stick my hood down or something? What, the, what is wrong with you people? It's off, it's on, it's off, it's on. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. It's nothing to do with performance. It's all about costume, makeup, Mostly special costumes. effects, and masks. This is a lot like fiberglass, but what it is, it's an epoxy, actually, so it's a bit more durable. There's, um, there's no, because with fiberglass, you have shrinkage and you have movement. Epoxy doesn't move, so it's very accurate when you, when you cast it. It's very strong, very light, so when he wears it, it's fairly, pretty comfortable as far as weight. There's multiple facets and, and there's an expression, but it's not over the top, and keeping some rivets and just hitting as many moments as I can, but still putting my flavor into it as well. Is this going to be as tough for you as the thing is for him? I mean, are you going to have to have all that stuff on you? know, you I don't think it's going to be as tough just because I don't have the head thing, the yeah, placement yeah. of that thing in, which is the kind of claustrophobic part of it. Yeah. I have, like, scars here, here, here. Take a good look, Ben. This is what a man looks like who embraces his destiny. The transformation of Doom was done primarily with prosthetic effects. He even had, like, skin that you could peel away as he was in the final stages of uh, transformation. I built a better, stronger being. <laughs> Made of silver and tack and sticky shit <laughs> on my neck. <laughs> I think it just doesn't look good. I'm not close enough to my camera. I need to be here. Thank you. Let's do it again. And then we would uh, put our electric effects tracked along the body and, and weave it underneath the skin and anything we needed to do to help augment that with glows and electricity and things like that. It's different to everything else that you've seen before because underneath it is not so fleshy, it's more of a metallic kind of substance and that's kind of weird <laughs> to start with. We are in, in, in comic world so you have to kind of go along with this kind of stuff a little bit but um, then it's really kind of, to me, I felt like it was the stripping down of a, a man you know, the stripping down of his, uh, of his beliefs and his whole system and his character and his um, personality, you know. And that initiates through the physicality. Uh, with the vanity level being so high with Victor, you know, once a cut on the face is not a good thing, and once it develops into other things, it's really not a pretty sight for him. I mean, it's not a pretty sight for anybody, but particularly Victor. This is how villains are born, you know. Uh, there are powerful people out there who use it for good and some they don't. So this is the yin and yang. Once he kind of gets the feel of the whole thing and starts to envelop it and, and discover it, he actually starts to enjoy it and see how much it can, it can bring him, how much power. Well, ultimately, the guy's looking for power. I've always wanted power. Now I have an unlimited supply. No thing to stand in your way. There's many things you can do with this, including drop them like a putz. I learned most of my moves from Jessica, but that's because she's a, uh, a uh, industrial pole expert. <laughs> that's what they call her. And you know. Julian's a show off. <laughs> that's so not true. She's a show off in the bunch, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. You can tell, can't you? <laughs> Doom is now going to walk over towards the thing holding a, a telephone pole or a lighting pole. And he's about to deal the final death blow to the thing. Because Doom, the baddest guy in town, is better than the right ground. <laughs> extras are doing good. They're very good, aren't, aren't they? Aren't they? Yes. Very nice job by the extras. Thank you. <laughs> the actors lead a little to be desired, but we'll do better, I promise. Roll, please. And action. During the film, we would see a progression turning gradually into the masked 
terror of Dr. Doom, who's a man made entirely of metal at the end. And so he would wear a prosthetic foam suit that was uh, metallic on all of its surfaces. You better get some good shots of this, because this is only happening once. The most attractive part of this outfit is the top knot you have going up here. You like that? Yeah, it's nice. A little tough. I feel quite powerful, though, I must say. Except for the fact that I can't turn my head or raise my arms. So this is what it comes down to. This is all, all the years studying, all the years in theater, all the years training to be an actor. It comes down to being stuck in a prosthetic zoom suit from God knows where and looking like a human spur. So we got that now. We're on to the wide shot. Fantastic Four in front of the Doom statue. You have the evolution of strength as well. You have him developing into this beastly man made of steel who can make things happen simply by thinking about them. He can electrocute things and he can use power and electricity for different kind of sources. The effects that we're creating uh, are Dr. Doom's energy effects. So he's able to, to gather energy and he's able to blast that energy back out at his opponents. This is an example of one of the shots where Doom is electrocuting Ned, the character. This is the, the plate that was shot for the film. You can see there's a practical explosion behind him, but all of the energy effects are left out. We have to create all those. The first thing we do for a shot like this, we actually match their movements on the computer. And you can see here, this checkerboard pattern is actually on the 3D model. And so you can see we've matched the arm for Dr. Doom here in his hand. And for the other character, Ned, we matched the entire body and the, and the coat and the fabric. Once we have that stuff matched on the computer, we can start applying effects between them. The lightning effect you can see is just geometry that we have in three-dimensional space. We actually can control precisely where we want the lightning to start and end. So in this case, we have uh, more than one piece of lightning. We have a piece going from his hand to the floor, and then we've got three or four separate pieces coming from the floor up to the body. Uh, and we place those start and end points by hand, so uh, we, we have a really good uh, idea of where it's going to be going. We end up putting a bunch of other layers on top of the uh, lightning effect. This is going to be a smoke layer that goes over the hand. This is kind of a more smoky aftermath of the lightning. The energy effects that we add in have to uh, shine on, on the characters in the scene, so we take that geometry of the character that we matched and use it as a surface to reflect light from our effects. And this is a pass of just that light that's reflecting on the character. So this is all of those layers put together. So you can see the main bolts, uh, they're pretty glared out and hot. You've got subtle smoke and plasma effects coming off the hand and the flares. What did you do? Exactly what I said I would. I built a better, stronger being and outsmarted the great Reed Richards. Victor, this is not the way to. No, it's not the way to go, and I'm telling you, OK? <laughs> and then I go, one, uh, one there. And he goes running off, and then one there. And I go, why the lightning all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Julian's probably, probably the funniest guy on the set. I mean, he is hilarious, but at the same time, he can switch that and give us this edge. I mean, that's what was great about Julian as well, through, through all of the the stuff, he always has this edge about him. Even when he's being the nicest and the charming, the most charming guy in the world, there's always this little thing where you know, hmm, this guy might, he might switch up on me. And he brought that to the role of Victor because Victor becomes, quote unquote, the greatest villain of all time. I, I put a lot of pressure on myself because there is a reputation to uphold. There is, I mean, he's the original nemesis. He's the original bad guy, he's the original Whatever it, you know what I mean. I, you know, so many characters have come out of that, including, you know, Lucas's comments on the, you know, Darth Vader comes from, from uh, Doctor Doom. So just to fill those shoes, I felt like it was almost impossible when I started. You know, obviously, at some point in time, you have to kind of let that go and say, I'll do the best I can, and I'll give it my best shot and whatever I can to fulfill a character, and hopefully people will enjoy it. <laughs> Call me Doom. Dr. Doom takes to wearing a metal mask, and we've been experimenting with different techniques for making his voice sound more scary. They wanted a mask sound, so we came up with a scuzzy drive bay that has some metal reflections inside there, and uh, actually record through the speaker, through the box, into the mic, 
We actually have it hooked up to this one right now, the electrical connector box. If you look over here, you can see the mic sticking right through here. It resonates through the whole box here. We get kind of a nice boxy resonant sound, and there's a couple pillows in there, and we're kind of off axis, and uh, it fills up the, uh, the mask sound along with these two tracks together. It just basically it becomes very believable. It's something that you would hear in nature as opposed to being kind of a concocted thing electronically. Doom is this steel, this indestructible, and of course Michael Chiklis is, is the thing. So when these guys are going at it, I mean, it's just maybe two rhinoceroses or just two big indestructible, they can't really hurt each other, but they're just two big entities just coming together. Cables loose for seconds and then tighten up into it just a little bit, like showing that this guy's backed up enough and bring it on, you know. Okay. Fuck it, bring it on, and you stop and back right. tighten your cable. So I'm not just cutting into a guy just standing perfect. Yeah. He comes in. Okay. So how's this from here? Just, oh. Yeah. Going out the window had to be really exaggerated to where they go out the window and into the pool. I mean, everything was more than just two guys fighting at it, one guy getting the upper hand on the other, it really wasn't that case. It's just a character-driven fight and how these guys would be in real life uh, as far as indestructible and not feeling any pain. Action! Doom is this, this tiny little guy right here in the middle of the intersection gathering energy from the buildings around him. They actually went up uh, to Vancouver and did uh, laser scans of the environment. So we have accurate three-dimensional geometry of the buildings and stuff for that set. We basically just built the facades of the buildings that needed to be in the shot. Uh, other things like lampposts and stuff that are also in there that the lightning is going to need to interact with. There's a bus in the background uh, that the lightning might hit. So this is one of the bolts that's coming down, and we have control where we can move this point around, and our lightning tool will automatically connect to things that it's near. So you can see there it's, it's touching the bus. If I drag it over here, you'll see it kind of arcs to things that it would arc to in the scene. So here it's hitting the lampposts, touching the ground over here. Uh, so we have pretty accurate control of where we want to place the lightning. Spark off the face, hood, and shoulder. Yeah. All right. It's bang, bang, bang. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Next <laughs> one. Here's the list. Of it. <laughs> yeah. OK, so let's get the mask on, please. Are we ready to maybe be going into the firing box here? Yeah. Can I open number eight here yes, to sir? put in the spark? I'd like to put that spark right there, one little stitch around it, just to hold it to his collar would be lovely. Thanks very much, girls. Neck, hood, shoulder. Here comes the rain. OK, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's give him the weapon. Step out. Stand by to go. XA Mark. I started watching the cartoons. Oh, really? Yeah, when I was like four or five years old. No and then kidding. I got into the comics. I mean, because I'm Australian, so. Do they was, have them in Australia? Oh, yeah, it was huge. Wow. I mean, all of us grew up reading the Fantastic Four comics and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then since I've been here, I've been doing a lot of history on the stuff. And, you know, I got all the original comics and I got but you the never first. never wrote me a letter. I've got the first cartoon. I did. I never heard <laughs> from you, not a word. <laughs> I, I've been busy, man. <laughs> 
I was in the States waiting, watching the mail every day. Nothing from Nothing from Latveria. No. Oh, hey, it's so good meeting you. Oh, and I'm going to follow your career because I know this is this is the start. From here on, there's no stopping you. This is what we call movie movie magic <laughs> right here. These are the guys Hello? that make me look what? as ugly as I look right now. <laughs> Thank you. It's time to end this. He's this totally gregarious sweetheart of a guy, and um, you know, just fascinated to listen to the way that you know we had a chat about the character and all that kind of stuff. And uh, what a what an honor! I mean, truly, and really, I've. I, 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 I've been so excited since I got in set because he was here as soon as I got here. I just I've been kind of bubbling since. So it's ridiculous. 